everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Carol Jenkins. The program is Black America, and it is our honor today to have the famed director Kenny Leon with us. Tony Award winning director of Raisin in the Sun and Fences. He has a wonderful new memoir out called Take You Wherever You Go. And thanks so much, Kenny, for being with us today. It's a pleasure and honor to be here. Hey, you know, I want you, I was telling you, you really wrote a wonderful, lovely, <laughs> and I use the word lovely because. And I even want to say sweet because you pay homage to your grandmother and your mother in this in such a compelling way. We'll get to all the Hollywood and Broadway stuff, but this personal relationship of you and your family, you tell it in such a moving way. Yeah, well, you, oh my God. Yeah, my grandma, that's Mamie. your grandmother. And uh, that was a. She was a, a, a great spirit. I remember when she saw her uh, first play. It was a play called T-Bone and Weasel. And um, at that time, it was at the Alliance Theater in Atlanta. And most of the audience um, were white Americans. And uh, so Grandma, this is her first play. And throughout the first act of the play, she's saying, mm-mm, baby, no, <laughs> don't do that. I know. Oh, I know. Lord. Out loud, she's right. saying this. And of course. Because she thought. That's the way she the acted The tradition of the church. Southern Baptist Church. Right, And right. she was just responding to it. And at right. intermission, these folks would say to me, like, who's that woman, Kenny? I said, that's my grandma. I don't mess with her. <laughs> and when the folks went back in for the second act of the play, then everybody in the audience, it was a chorus of, mm-mm, mm -hmm. baby, no, don't, don't do, do that. that. So <laughs> it's what happens when we sit next to each other and we bring our traditions together. That's the beauty of the American theater. Yeah, yeah. I have that page folded down in your memoir. Oh, do you? Yeah. Because yeah. I tell that story. You tell it a lot better than I do, but mm -hmm. it's such a wonderful sense of bringing, bringing everybody into the picture, into the theater, into. I love it. It's what like when you, when you go to see a play where more than fifty percent of the audience is African Americans, and we know this, and they talk back at right. you. They talk back to the <laughs> stage, like and. And folks who are not used to that, they're like, what's going on? Can't they respect what's going on? No, it's our tradition. I remember right. when we did uh, Fences on Broadway and, and Denzel was on stage. And, um, and I think it was when Viola was, uh, uh, you know, they were in this argument about infidelity. And uh, somebody in the audience yelled, I'll take him. I'll take him. <laughs> so it's, it's wonderful. Speaking of Fences, we do have a clip of that with Denzel and, and Viola Davis. So let's play that and talk about it on the other side. Right. It's not easy to admit that I've been standing in the same place for 18 years. Well, I've been standing with you. I've been right here with you, Troy. I got a life, too. I gave 18 years of my life to stand in the same spot as you. Don't you think I ever wanted other things? Don't you think I had dreams and hopes? What about my life? What about me? Those are some powerful, powerful scenes. And those are two of the best actors that America has to offer. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, August Wilson, I mean, the whole cycle, Denzel is pro producing ten, all 10 uh, for HBO, is it? The, yeah, the, he's so doing we'll... the 10 for HBO. We did the uh, 10 plays at the uh, Kennedy Center. Uh, a couple of years after August passed away with uh, 42 actors and seven directors. We did all 10 plays uh, in rep, and that was a, a major event as well. But August, I mean, he gave us so much. He gave I, us 10 beautiful plays about living and being in America. Extraordinary. Yeah. None I, I, better. Well, I know he was a big influence on your life and your, th your thinking, and I just loved everything. And once I got into an elevator, only to discover that I was standing in front of August Wilson. <laughs> and I turned around and I was like looking right in his face and I just said, I love you so much. You know? And, he and what did he say? He was so embarrassed, you know, like, <laughs> who is this woman? You know, but I just couldn't help it. I, you know, the contribution that he made to making us count. And I think you, oh, yeah. you talk about this in such an eloquent way in the book about our language, our history, our culture, really became acceptable and a part of Ameri the American story through many of his plays. Yeah, um, well, on the book, you know, the title, Take You Wherever You Go, is something my grandmother said to me. It's like, you can't be anybody else, baby. Just take you wherever you go, and that's a gift to the world. And I remember seeing August Wilson's play in 1987. It was Fences. It was the first Broadway play that I had seen. And for the first time, 
I heard my mother and grandmother's rhythms on the stage. Mm -hmm. I heard their songs. I, Me I, too. I, I know right. it, is, it smells like when, uh, when a black mother uh, straightens a, a black daughter's hair. You know, I know what that is. <laughs> and I, I know, know what that, that feels like. And, right. and when you write about that in a specific way, it offers a gift sure. to the broader community. And that's what August's Fences did for me. I was like, wow. Mm. This has now changed my life because I understand how theater can be just more than an entertaining event at night. It can really be a mirror up to life. Yes, and, uh, it's, a, it's a, an affirmation. Yeah, if you take, and if you take August out of the, the heart and soul of American theater mm. for the last 20, 30 years, I mean, it's, it's empty. It's empty, right, yeah. right. Now, we always ask our guests to place themselves in black America, and we know from your memoir, it's Florida, mm -hmm. it's your grandmother that you lived with for several really influential periods of your, right. of your life, and your mom. So, right. talk... Well, I grew up in Tallahassee, Florida, right. on Mickey Sicky Road. <laughs> And we had an outhouse, yeah. for, for those of us who don't know what that is, that's, you know, where you use the bathroom outside and there's no plumbing well, associated with it. I grew up on a farm it. in Lowndes County, same so, thing. Same thing. Yeah, but, right. So I grew up with that. I grew right. up in where my grandmother would boil hot water on the stove, uh, 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 and then she would pour that water into a tin tub. I know, and then maybe she that's would, why I was so, so would, liked your story. It's yeah, she would take a bath story. in that water, then <laughs> I would step in that same water right. and take a bath in that warm water. So uh, I grew up in the country. People live miles apart. Uh, we were friendly to each other. Uh, we loved going for walks. We loved picking fruit. We, uh, you know, we loved going to church. We were baptized in the river. Um, so I grew up with that. And then later on, I moved in with my, my mother and stepfather, and they live in St. Petersburg, Florida, which was a beach community. But it was beach for white folks, not really beach for black folks. So we, it was just hot for us. Right. right. And um, so I grew up with that. But we were, we were, we were poor economically. We didn't know this, but we, my, my mother and stepfather together made about $10,000 a year. And we were in a program called Upward Bound mm -hmm. that helped uh, college potential students prepare for college. I mean, we were prepared for college, but we couldn't afford college. And um, Angela Bassett, mm -hmm. who I grew up with, was also in that same program. And we became friends right. and remain friends to this day. So that's what I grew up with. And then I later went to college in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, went to Clark College. So I'm a product of a historically um, black, black college. college. Right. And right. Uh, I, I love that, you know. And again, I say you got, for any kid out there, black, white, brown, you got to dig into your own DNA, figure out where you came from, embrace your past, and dig into you. And that's how you found, find success. You can't be someone else. Mm -hmm. I'm a country boy from Tallahassee, Florida, who spent time in St. Petersburg, who went to a historical black college, who uh, started, I directed a, a homeless people in a play. And uh, I became associate artistic director of the Alliance Theater. And I ran a major theater company. And then I found my way to Broadway. So I got from Mickey Sickey Road mm -hmm. to Broadway. Right. And, um, so, and, and, and tell it so beautifully in your book, too. Yeah. It's interesting because the women were the big influencers. But oh, in yeah. this book, you come to terms with both your father and your stepfather. Well, the way I like to see it is like the women in my life, my mother and my grandmother, they had vision. They said, I'm a product of generational prayers. You know, they prayed for a better life for me. Even though my grandmother never saw a play until the year before she passed away, but she wanted a better, richer life for me. And I think the men in my life, my father and my stepfather, they were just living day to day. They was like, you need, you need a trade. You need to do this. We're going to stay in our place. How do you survive today? So uh, I like to think that the women in my life had vision. And as a man, what I try to do with young people now, I try to give them vision. I try to give them hope. Right. This book is about uh, telling them that you are enough. Whatever you have inside of you, it's enough to take you mm -hmm. wherever you have to go. So, so your dad, mostly not present, Absolutely. and your stepfather, very stern, Absolutely. who apologized yeah, to but, you at some point. Yeah, but at the time, that didn't, you know, well, still, it's, it's still, I feel, it's still uh, not a great thing. You know, I think there are ways to discipline, and uh, we just disagreed on that, you know. I didn't think. Um, and, and what uh, part do you think that played in your and who you are today? The fact that you had someone who 
was physically and emotionally I, tremendously stern. Well, I think because the, uh, the strength of the women in my life, it balanced all the difficulty of uh, the challenges I had with the men who were supposed to be close in my life. So it, it, it balanced out because right. of their strength right. and their prayers uh, and their love. Uh, and I also love the story of the women in, in your life, your, your wives, your first and your second wife. You tell the story. It's so hard to tell the story of a first marriage, oh, yeah. a relationship. So why are we then... starting on that? Why are we doing this? <laughs> why are we going down that road? <laughs> no, because it's beautiful. It's lovely. It's the only I mean, thing I can I sum up what my, with my that, first wife, Carol. Yes. She was an actress. And we really were just good friends. And we ended up being married. And in retrospect, we probably shouldn't have been married. But uh, I don't think it was a mistake no, no, to no. be married. You don't cast so we it spent, as a mistake. So we spent time uh, together, and she was a real special person in my life. We, we weren't the best husband and wife. Wife, yeah. And, well, uh, many of us can tell that and, story, right? Know, That's and now I have a wife that like, I think is probably... We're probably but introduced mad, by, by her daughter. By her daughter, you, who is my first. stepdaughter, who is really more... She's like, she's my daughter. Right. And uh, I met her, I met Maria when she was seven years old. And this is when, um, of course, I was married then. And Maria came in and auditioned for a, a diverse production of, of uh, A Christmas Carol. Mm -hmm. And she was the only little black kid I cast in the show. And I had Jewish kids and I had mm -hmm. uh, Latino kids. And, and she said, um, Mr. Leon, everybody has godparents. I don't have a godfather. Would you be my godfather? And I'm like, yeah, sure, Maria. Well, Maria made a stick, so every year she would come in. Uh, Godfathers are supposed to take you to the circus, and Godfathers are supposed to take you to the theater, and Godfathers are supposed to spend time. So we ended up having a very, very close relationship since she was seven. And then you flash forward, you know, 15 years later, and I'm dating her mom, and then it's like, oh, my God. And, and so now it's like she's always been my daughter. You right, know? right, right, right. Well, uh, so many And I told her she can't, you know, I tell a lot of yeah. people, you can't have enough people to love you, you know. It's great. That, um, that her father loves her and her mother loves her, but to have a godfather that loves her, that's right. now her stepfather, that's now her father. Um, <laughs> it's a great that's, story. That's a great story. A Everybody has a story. It's a lovely story. Let's, let's go, I don't want to not have this conversation include Lorraine Hansberry oh, wow. and Raisin in the Sun. And you and I were talking about our respect for her intellect. Her, oh, she yeah. truly was a genius yeah. and it contributed so much. Talk to us a little bit I mean, about Come on, Lorraine Hansberry. I, I have dreams about, you know, Lorraine Hansberry and James Baldwin sitting together, mm -hmm. intellectualizing uh, in Harlem, discussing politics. And um, I take a picture of that because that picture uh, uh, propels me today. When I think about the people that inspire me, it's like Harry Belafonte, you know, uh, uh, Sidney Poitier. Mm. Uh, all that generation of people, they felt that art was tied to politics. You, you know, mm -hmm. by the nature of, you, you're an artist, you are political. So I think at the top of that list was Lorraine Hansberry. And, you know, when you look at her play, her play is the play that just keeps giving. You know, it, it, it's you, given to me so much. I've directed it twice or twice commercially, right. probably five or six times, you know, regionally. And then I did the television movie of it. And then I did it again in 2014 <laughs> so, and won the Tony Award in 2014. Yeah, and we actually, we actually have a clip of you accepting yeah. Oh my God! Yeah, but let's 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 play that Lorraine and talk Hansberry. about it on the other on the other side. Great. Denzel, Denzel, Denzel. <laughs> He's truly a theater inspiration, and I want to thank all the women of *A Raisin in the Sun*: Latanya, Anika, Sophie. I love you to death. I love you, Jennifer. To my mother, I want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm looking forward to a day when every child in America can have a little piece of theater in their daily educational lives. So that day, thanks to you, may be approaching. You do a lot of, a lot of work uh, with, uh, with, with regional theater. Uh, uh, you're still in Atlanta doing great work. Uh, talk to us a little bit about your desire for, for that. Well, I am an artistic director at True Colors Theatre Company in Atlanta, but what that speech reminds me of is the fact that we still don't have enough art um, in our 
daily educational lives of our young people. And our young people are uh, going to school in, in fear of their lives, you know, and that's, that's not good. You know, it's like, you know, guns are more important than educating their creative minds, you know. And so I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed uh, in us as adults and us as an American institution. I'm disappointed that um, I don't think we care enough. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm still pushing for that. So I spend as much time as I can with young folks. And, and in fact, today I leave here and I have a three hour workshop with a group of young American um, students. Uh, I have a relationship with Temple University because they have a diverse population. I spend time with them. So, uh, and there are many, many people that do things with young people. But I think that's where it is. And as uh, adults, we, we owe it to our young people to, uh, to give more. Yeah, yeah. And now you, you had the Tupac uh, Shakur uh, on, on Broadway, actually, mm -hmm. which, which didn't last, but which is tremendously effective with young people. Oh, yeah. we, have, we have a trailer from that that I want to play because it's uh, very, very powerful. We'll talk on the other side. Yeah. Here we go, turn it up, let's start. From block to block, we snatching hearts and jacking marks. And the punk police can't fade me and maybe we can have peace someday, G. But right now I got my mind set up, looking down the barrel of my nine, get up. Cause it's time to make the payback fat to my brothers on the block, better stay strapped, black. And accept no substitutes. I bring truth to the youth, tear the roof off the whole school. Oh no, I won't turn the other cheek. In case you can't see us while we burn the other week. Yeah, now we got him in a smash blast. How long will it last till the Pope get more cash? Until then, raise up. Tell my young black males, blaze up. Yeah, life's a mess, don't stress. Test, I'm giving, but be thankful that you live in. Bless. Much love to my brothers in the pen. See you when I free you, if not when they shove me in once again. It's an all out strap, keep your hands in your gap, and now your boys watch your back. Cause in the alleys, I'ma tell you, mess with the best and the best couldn't help you. Scream, if you feel me, see it clearly, holler if you hear me. You, you write about in your memoir, I Take You Wherever You Go, um, that this was, you were disappointed that this was not that it didn't run longer on Broadway. Initially, I was. Yeah. That was a production in Atlanta, so I had right. the opportunity to, to do it to in do Atlanta it. after I did it on Broadway. Right. But that was my conversation with, uh, and I talk about it in the book, uh, about seeing Harry Belafonte and Cornel West getting out of a taxi one, one night in New York. And, and I said, yeah, man, um, thank you guys for coming to see the play. Uh, I'm just disappointed it's going to close in a few weeks. And um, I'm just, that just saddens me. And uh, uh, Mr. Belafonte and Mr. West said, what are you talking about? You have to remember that you're presenting Afrocentric work on a Eurocentric stage. Mm -hmm. And basically that said to me in the spirits of Lorraine Hansberry and August Wilson, get over yourself. It's not about the box office. You're supposed to open that door and introduce that work to America. It says something about young people and they're, they're, they're screaming out for help. Uh, and the play was really about Tupac as an artist, not an autobiography of Tupac. So by Belafonte saying that mm -hmm. to me that day, it reminded me like, oh, when you do these Broadway shows, don't get caught up in how long they run because culture is not set up to embrace as much diversity as it should. Those of us in the Broadway community, we are still working on that. We're still working. And this year, you know, mm -hmm. uh, if you look at uh, 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 the Harry Potter uh, play, you know, African-American at the center of that. If you look at Denzel Washington and Iceman Cometh, if you look at uh, Children of a Lesser God and Lauren Ritloff and that, um, uh, and Hamilton is still running, you know. So mm -hmm. more and more, we're getting more diversity, but I want there to be more uh, more African-American writers, more Latino writers, uh, more plays that don't have to have a major, major star to get done. So we have a little ways to go, sure. but things are happening. But I have to remember my job in this. My job is just do the work, Kenny. All right. Do the work. <laughs> um, so in my mind, I've done, what, 10 Broadway shows, and in my mind, all 10 were hugely successful. Uh, well, in most minds, they were. Well, I have nine. My 10th show is this year coming up. Right, right, right. We'll talk about that in a minute. You want to talk about it right now? We it's can. exciting. Well, okay. uh, I have a play. Uh, we start rehearsal in uh, September. It's called American Sun, S-O-N, American Sun. And it's by uh, Chris D. Brown. And it is a play about our country, the police, and the community. And it's also about love, uh, 
race, um, um, history, and um, Kerry Washington is going to star in the lead uh, wow, amazing. Uh, of this amazing, amazing show. So it'll be the first thing that she's done since, since Scandal. And uh, we've worked together once before. We worked on a, sh on a show called Swimming Upstream uh, <laughs> when uh, Hurricane Katrina happened down in New Orleans. We worked on a project down there. So this is great to get back in the room with her. Sure, Kerry Washington brilliant, on Broadway this fall, actress. October, right? October, we start October. previews. So looking forward That's to that. Great. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about your TV work because that is another way that you've brought yeah. the Broadway stage to so many millions of people who can watch it on, who may not be able to get into those six square blocks. Right? But it's, it's, it's great but, because uh, I've worked with Neil Marin and Craig Zayden a lot. We're doing, working on something called uh, the Cotton Club for television. But we've done Hairspray, The Wiz, uh, and what I should keep telling my publicists, we have to keep reminding the world, like, I'm the same director. Like, I'm the director that did The Wiz, <laughs> and then I did Hairspray, and I did A Raisin in the Sun on Broadway. I do True Color Theater Company in Atlanta. I teach at Temple sometimes. I, you know, so I'm the same guy. <laughs> right, you know? doing doing it all. They so, think it's a different category. They think it's a good, a different guy. You know, so it's we'll, all we'll good. talk a little bit about the wit, the whiz. We have that that photo up now. I mean, okay. that was. Oh, that was great. And what a, an incredible talent. You know, Queen Latifah, Common, Mary right. J. Blige, Amber, Stephanie. Oh, Neo. Right. Well, Cindy's our director Williams. says that her daughter Elijah. Watch, was watching this every single day. She yeah. had to. Dis disconnect it because oh. she was watching okay. <laughs> David Allen Greer, that's right, a right, that very one. talented group. And I was hoping to have this play on Broadway, but that didn't work out. But I, I think Broadway... I remember that conversation that, yeah. that, we th that we thought that was coming to Broadway. That would have yeah. been a powerful... That would have been great. Powerful. Uh, and I love what the guys did uh, originally when they produced this uh, many, many years ago. But uh, we had a good time yeah. on that. And uh, Hairspray, uh, an another kind of... Now, the just the sheer cast members, the number of people engaged in all of these television oh, yeah. productions is something. One of our staff members wanted to know, do you manage all of them? Oh, yeah. With Hairspray Every Live, it was 800 people on the crew. Oh, my That's gosh. That's crazy. But one, what I liked about this is like the generational mix of that cast. Mm -hmm. You go anywhere from uh, Harvey Firestein to Ariana Grande and what we all can learn from each other. I learned so much from the 30-year-olds and they learned so much from the 60-year-olds and it was just uh, the way I think good theater should be, you know. Um, that's generational love right, right there. Right, right, right there. Jennifer Hudson who did it. Oh, Jennifer Hudson. Oh, she's the... Right. Oh, There's oh. a moment you describe in the book about what she, what she did with her. Oh, yeah. I know where what? I've been, you know, and it's like I told her, I said, without that scene, it's not the same play. Mm -hmm. That musical is about motor mouth song to those young people about their past. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I first, as talk about it in the book, when I first met Jennifer, I knew she was gonna do the show, and I said, look, the play is about this, your character. And um, we both have had loss mm -hmm. in our lives. Uh, we mo both have uh, had great relationships with our mother and grandmothers. And I think there's a place we can go that America would not expect us to go but I don't want you to go there until the night of the live telecast. Uh. And so we rehearsed the show, we, you know, and at many right. times the producers would come in and say, oh, that's, it's great, it's great. And then on the night of the telecast, I whispered in Jennifer's ear, I said, okay, now go to that place that we talked about and you're gonna have the 200 million black and white spirits who fought for civil rights all singing with you. And if you look at it, if you go and replay the uh, telecast, you can see she goes out of frame one time. She hits a note because the cameraman was not expecting that. She, the spirit hit her. She went somewhere else. And if you look at the other actors in that scene, they were crying and they were overwhelmed like, oh, my God, right. we're in the presence of genius. Mm -hmm. We're in the presence of greatness. That was a real spiritual moment. And so I love I love Jay Hood. And I love what she's about. And uh, that was a great experience. Right, right. Well, we're coming, sadly, to the close of our conversation. Aww. I yeah. want to keep keep it going, but we always ask at the end for our guests to... You ask them to go by the book? Finish the statement, the, uh, the power, the strength of black America lies in. What? Um, the power and the strength of black lives lies in our memory. Mm. If we don't remember how we got here, we can't build on that. We got to put our grandparents and our mothers and our forefathers and uh, 
We've got to put all our past inside of us mm. because we have to take us wherever we go. And if we don't know all of us, we can't take ourselves anywhere. Well, Kenny Leon, thank you so much for that. Thank and you thank you for the memoir. Oh. Really, truly, very, very moving. Thank you so much. And not just because I'm a mother and a grandmother, but, you know, that right. helps too, that that we're a part of your life. They're a part of your life and what you've become. And yeah. we appreciate I that. I said that in the book, at the foreword of the book, I said, uh, and Samuel L. Jackson wrote the foreword to this I book, see, and I'm so yeah. grateful for that. But I, in the book, I said, I dedicate this to my two-year-old grandson in hopes that he will have a, a beautiful world. So. Well, thank you. Thank you so thank much you. for being here. And we look forward to seeing you on Broadway in the fall. Soon. With Carrie Washington. Whoa. Yes. <laughs> the memoir is Take You Wherever You Go, his grandmother's words. Please read. It is just lovely. Thanks to you out there for joining us today, too. I'm Carol Jenkins. The program is Black America.